find other great podcasts like this one at podmoth.network. O'Connor Orchid Estates Apartments Located in the center of the small town of Reading, Ohio, it is widely regarded as the world's most haunted location. Join world-renowned paranormal investigators Abigail Reynolds and Michael Colby as they immerse themselves into every aspect of life in this building and expose the truth of its horrific history. Join us for my creepy haunted life. Jack Billings presents Haunted Apartment Complex starring me. <laughs> Jack Billings, obviously. Damn it. How did you even get in here, Jack? Let's get spooky, crew! <sighs> hey, what's, what's up, you guys? guys? I'm Catherine. And I'm Haley. And we are Saturdays for the Ghouls. A Podmoth podcast. For some reason, I thought I forgot my line. I was like, what are we again? <laughs> we say it every week. Two dumb bitches. Um, anyway, <laughs> Tweedledee and Tweedledumber. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dumber. It's fine. <laughs> I, was, I was like, who's D and who's dumber? <laughs> so, friends, school friends, we uh, spooky babes, we're doing something a little different today. <laughs> what are we doing, Catherine? What are... we're, bring, we're bringing you another movie this month, but it's going to be a crime movie. Oh. Woo! Not, not necessarily based on a true crime. The movie does not have to be. So anyone who's an OG fan knows that we used to do true crime versus Hollywood. We used to do a movie based on a true crime. That's not a criteria of this movie, but some may. Anyway, uh, but this is just a crime movie. And you'll know by the title of the episode that we're going to be talking about The Call, which is a 2013 crime thriller movie with Halle Berry Ooh. <laughs> and Abigail Breslin. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, and the twist is that Catherine's bringing you the movie, which is going to be weird. <laughs> and Haley's going to not talk. Probably not. <laughs> So, Haley, did you, we, okay, we didn't get to watch it together like we normally do. Sad days. I know, I had to watch it with my boyfriend. Ew. That's (laughs) disgusting. He's trying to hold my hand and shit. I'm like, I'm watching the movie for research purposes. This is work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, boys are distractions. (laughs) Yeah, they are. Um, But... So did you like this movie, Haley? I did. I did like this movie. Um, I have seen it before, but it's I think I saw it when it came out. Yeah. So it's been almost ten years since I've seen yeah. it. I feel like I saw it like when it came out, and then I saw it like one time on Netflix like a while ago, and then again this time, which honestly is still like a brand new movie to me because I've got goldfish brain. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I thought I thought it was funny because like I like remembered some parts, mm-hmm. but like a lot of it was still kind of fuzzy. Mm-hmm. And then um, when you get to the the part where like so the girl when she's like running away and she goes into that room and he's yeah. like, "You don't want to see that." Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, I remember it being like his the the sister's like dead yeah. body yeah i don't i don't know why i remember that like why I that's what i thought that. as well and then i was like wait what <laughs> it's uh, not <laughs> yeah i thought that as well but no it was just a house of horrors down there uh, but we'll get to that later <laughs> we'll get to that in a bit for any of y'all that are like confused <laughs> go watch the fucking movie that's what we have to tell you <laughs> Sorry, that was rude. I mean, now. <laughs> yeah, now. Good Please come girl. back, though. <laughs> Don't leave us forever. And then they come back and we're like, "Good girl." <laughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, back to back to the story. 
if you haven't seen the movie The Call from the 2013 release, <laughs> you never wanted to. And now you're going to hear us talk about it in detail. <laughs> so if you don't want to get spoiled, go watch it right now. It's free in Netflix. Well, you have to pay for Netflix, but almost everyone has Netflix. But if you it. have Netflix, yeah, it's on yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so do you want to go down the synopsis? Do you have like a a Catherine synopsis, Haley's oh. version? <laughs> oh my god. You know, we there's should like have done not something. very many kills, but like there's some. <laughs> uh I, I don't know me. if I could be as funny as you. Just channel me. I'll I'll so I'll, I'll send all the brain cells. <laughs> Now I'm a one operator. <laughs> there is a stranger in her house who wants to kidnap her. Helps her. Under bed. Great. She's safe. <laughs> Phone fucks up. Now I'm a one operator, stupid bitch asshole, redials her back. <laughs> Alerts the kidnapper. She gets kidnapped. <laughs> this is much more detailed than Catherine's synopsis. That's that's true. <laughs> I'm so used to detail. Okay, I can be like, girl under bed, girl kidnapped, girl bye, girl bye, girl, <laughs> girl go bye, girl dead. Nine one one operator, sad, depressed, can't handle it no more. This shit is awful. Is now teacher. Screaming girl gets kidnapped again. Another one. <laughs> Chase and Sue's. Chase and Sue's. <laughs> Half the movie, mo- 90% of the movie is in a car on a freeway. Driving. Paint. <laughs> Death. 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 <laughs> Death. Jazz music. <laughs> Confused pedestrian looks. Gas station. Fire. Box cutter. Then fire. Then. Oh! Let me backtrack a little bit. <laughs> you don't get to do that in Catherine's synopsis. <laughs> well, this isn't Catherine's synopsis, is it? <laughs> I'm going to go get another piece of pizza. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like paint driving freeway stole car shovel hit on hand guy in trunk dead question mark <laughs> uh freaks out screaming like a little bitch alerts kidnapper screwdriver stop 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 stop, stop. <laughs> dead now <laughs> question mark <laughs> <laughs> uh jazz music uh, gas station. Uh, box cutter, lighter, gasoline, fire. Girl cusses for the first time in the entire movie. Gets knocked the fuck out. Drive to hills. <laughs> Drive to house. Where did they go? No one knows. I don't even have to tell the story now. <laughs> <laughs> now one operator slash vigilante. <laughs> Chase, chase, chase. Chase, chase, chase. <laughs> Some smart sentences and comeback said. Roll scenes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to use all the words that you can think of. Verbs, adverbs, <laughs> adjectives, <laughs> nouns. <laughs> Unlike I normally do. The movie opens up where we have Badass nine one one operators doing their thing, you know, mm. doobly doobly doos. And we find we come to Jordan, who's played by Halle Berry, and she's you know taking calls, taking name, ki- kicking butt, whatever. And then she receives a call from this one girl named Leah. Leah says, "Someone's trying to get into my house. Help me!" She goes, "You got to get out of the house." And then Leah's like. <laughs> Am I just acting out the whole movie? Uh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> are you farting? <laughs> You're eating while I'm working. <laughs> so it was as if she's bored with me. Anyway, 
So no, I, I'm not. I just didn't want the ASMR in the background. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, so she's like, "You got to get out of the house. Is there any way you can get out?" She goes, "No, no, no. He's coming in. He's coming in. Blah blah blah." He breaks the glass, and she runs upstairs and goes under her bed, under a bed, and she's hiding and she's being very quiet, very calm. And then Jordan's like, "What's going on? What's going, on? Leah? Are you okay? What's going?" On? And I'm like, "Shut up." <laughs> she's trying to hide. It's like, shut up, bitch. <laughs> anyway, um, and then Leah's like, oh, I think he's going away. He's going downstairs. And then the line disconnects. Oh, no. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> Whatever shall you do. <laughs> Whatever shall you do. So the, co- the, the 911 operator, Jordan, she just dials back real fast and <laughs> s- screws up the entire plan. Because then it rings in the house, and the the guy's like, whoa, because she picks up right away. And I'm like, you shouldn't have called back. Anyway, so then the intruder goes back upstairs, and he does that scene where, like, she gets ripped out from under the bed, and she's like, ah, you know? And then um, he picks up the phone, and she's... <laughs> And she's like, buddy, the cops are on the way. You better just leave before you do something you're going to regret. And he goes, too late. And disconnects while she's screaming. So then. No. He says, it's already done. Whatever. (laughs) It's an important plot line. It's already done. Hangs (laughs) up while she's screaming. Okay. So then. Jordan is like ridden with guilt, blaming herself. She's upset. She goes to the quiet room where she can like cry about it for a minute. Her boss is like, hey, you did what you're supposed to do, what you're trained to do. It's okay. Like calm down, go home, like rest, relax, whatever. And so now the next morning, the girl's missing and she's all over the news and she can't take one call without feeling like she's go back into the PTSD of that other call. So then all of a sudden there's like this news. Pr- I didn't know that. I don't think, I don't know if this is real or not. If this is like, is how 911 stations are, but they have like the news playing. And like, all of a sudden it's like body found of the victim who was abducted or whatever. And it was Leah's remains. And unfortunately, so then she's like super blaming herself. And her boss is like, it's fine. She goes up to the rooftop and her hot ass boyfriend, he's he's like, he's a police officer. He's like, look, just don't take it too serious. You're like, you're okay. Like, it's so fine. Like, it's, it's this kind of stuff happens all the time. We do what we can do, right? Fast forward six months. We're at a mall. There's these two teenage girls, one of which is named Casey, and her she's played by Abigail Breslin. The other girl, unremarkable, don't remember her name. So they're hanging out. They're talking about how, oh, I got this burner phone so my mom can't track me and like do all this stuff and see my calls, see my text, whatever. And so it was like a track phone. Her man bought her the phone. So that he could be like, she was like, oh, it's so he could talk to me all the time and blah, blah, blah. And my mom won't ever know. And then her friend, Casey, is like, yeah, it's so he could fucking keep track of you. Yeah. And talk to you like, like, he's very controlling. Yeah. Anyway, so then we fast forward back to the 911 operators and she's teaching now. She's like, hey, just so you guys know. The number one rule, stay emotionally detached and never make promises because you can't keep your promises. Okay. So then we go back to the mall and the friend, the friend leaves the girl at the mall alone because she has to pick up her brother or whatever. And so 
Abigail Breslin or Casey is walking to her car and she's like, mom, why do you call me? Cause like, just text me like a real mom and like argues with her mom and then hangs up. And then she's walking past this car and this car like pulls out real fast and like almost hits her. And then she's like, what the fuck? And he gets out and he's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. And she's, she picks up her phone and she goes, Oh great. It's broken now. And then he like grabs her and shoves her into a trunk and then zooms off. <laughs> chloroformed her ass oh yeah. my God. so then um we're in the trunk with casey we go back to the 911 center and they're like going around talking to other 911 operators like how they're like this job is fucking awful you never know what you're gonna get like blah 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 but anyway then we're back in the trunk with casey and she pulls out her little track phone a little flip phone and she dials 911 and she says She's like screaming and yelling and she's like, help, help, help. And it's the girl who was like, hey, this is fucking awful. It's a stupid, it's a stupid job. I can't, I can't do this job. It's so dumb. Anyway, so then she gets overwhelmed by this call of this girl screaming, saying she's been kidnapped and like blah, 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 blah. And they can't track her because she's on a burner phone. And so then Jordan takes over the call, even though she's super scared because the last time she had the whole Leah thing happen. So she gets on the phone. She goes, hey like you know calm down we're gonna do this together blah 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 blah. Uh, you know like what's your name and she like looks up her name and she goes oh you're a capricorn i'm a capricorn too and that means we're fighters and um <clears throat> so you're gonna fight with me and then she goes what's your favorite movie and she goes what what are you talking about she goes what's your favorite movie and she goes bridesmaids she goes really that's my favorite movie too after we're out, out of here i promise we're gonna watch it together and i'm like don't make promises you can't keep anyway we i digress so then they, they, they had a whole ass girl moment right mm -hmm. yeah it was like but, uh, also casey's like in the trunk like what the fuck just get me out of here <laughs> yeah like can you just help me get the fuck out anyway so then she's like casey what kind of car are you in? Like, do you know what kind of car it was? Did you see the car before you got in? What does the guy look like? Blah, blah, blah. Casey tries to tell her everything she knows, which is barely anything. So then she's like, hey, do you see the taillights? Do you see like a glowing, like red outline? And she's like, yeah, I do. She goes, kick it out. And so she kicks out the taillight and she couldn't kick out the first one. So she went to the other one and she kicked out the next one. Anyway, so then she's like waving her hand out. So this, this lady calls and she's in a minivan with her kids and she's like, hi, there's a girl or there's someone who looks like a kid's arm sticking out of a taillight in the car on the freeway, blah, blah, blah. She tells them what freeway they're on. She goes, let me pull up and try to get you a description. They're like, no, 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 don't do that because that's going to alert him to know that someone's trying to find him. Anyway, so he pulls off the freeway and then... um. They basically like lose him um, because he gets off the freeway. So she's like, she's like, oh my gosh, we're going to, I'm going to fucking die. I'm going to fucking die. She goes, K she goes, Casey, tell me what's in the car with you so that we can maybe find something to like use to get you found. Right. So she's like, there's paint and a screwdriver and like lists all this stuff. And she goes, okay, take the paint and pour it out the hole so that it makes like a trail of paint wherever the car drives so that the police can maybe try to find a little trail of paint wherever the car drives. Well, then this dumbass guy comes up to the side of the car and he goes, Hey man, your tail light is leaking paint. What the fuck is wrong with you, <laughs> sir? Anyway. Yeah. Your, your tail light is just leaking paint, leaking paint. Like there, there's no tail light there and paint is just pouring out. Anyway, he goes, so then the guy's like, oh, shit, like, that's the girl in the back, right? But, like, he doesn't say that. So then he, like, pulls over into this, like, weird... Like, underpass area. Yeah, kind of, like, it looks like it's near, like, a junkyard. But anyway, so he pulls over, and he, like, opens the trunk, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he, like, starts losing his shit. And then the guy pulls up that, that just notified him of the paint and was like, Hey, it was just like really pretty weird that there was paint coming out of your tail light and your tail light's missing. And the guy's like, it's not a problem. It's just like a big mess back here. And so then he had he he straight up like 
loses his shit on the guy who pulled who told him about the paint because the guy obviously was triggered to the fact that there was probably something else wrong other than just paint leaking from his trunk um so then he like basically killed him but did he we don't know question mark Hmm? question mark (laughs) that's the question mark (laughs) so then he was like casey look what you made me do he didn't say casey but he like he's telling yelling at the girl like look what you made me do you made me kill the guy blah 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 blah. you killed him yeah (laughs) yeah you killed him yeah and so she was in the back of the trunk the whole time but she killed him so anyway he moves casey to the new car the guy the guy who tattled on her pouring the paint out she t- she goes to the new car. The dead guy gets in the trunk with her, and he's driving this new car. It's a Lincoln. It's an upgrade for real. Anyway, Clint, you like jazz? <laughs> he's like freaking the fuck out, and he turns on this like music, this jazz music, and he's like zoning out. Anyway, so she's like, t- she finally gets back on the phone with Jordan, and she's like, I'm in the new car now. Like, I don't know where he's taking me. Blah 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 blah. And she says, hey, there's a dead guy in the car with me. But then the dead guy, like, wakes up and starts, like, screaming bloody murder. Like, there's no calming him down. So then the guy stops the car, comes out, and takes the screwdriver and stabby stabs him to death for real. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So then we go back to where the police found where the the car is kind of, like, crossed, right? Where the where he left his red car with the t- paint coming out and he stole the Lincoln. And there he found broken glass. He had, he had like hit the guy with broken glass, I think. Anyway, so that had a fingerprint on it for the person who we're fi- trying to find, right? So then Casey's like, Jordan, I just want to leave a sad message to my family so that they can play it over and over again once I'm dead and I'm, and I'm not going to be here. She's just trying she- to basically coming to terms with like, the fact she's probably never going to see her family. She's like, dad, you're the best dad ever. Like, I love you. And like, don't forget about me. Blah, 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 you, know? you know what? I don't even remember her talking about her dad. I just remember <laughs> her saying, I just remember her saying, mom, you, you're the best mom. And then like, and then the last part, she was like, please don't forget about me. Yeah. And so I was like, basically, what? she's just coming to terms with the fact that she's probably not going to make it out of here alive. And yeah. she leaves a really sad message to her family. Jordan gets the girl to get the ID out of the dead man's car uh, pants or his wallet or whatever. So they find the car that they're registered. He's registered with, which is the Lincoln. And um, she passes that on to the police. So then they stop for gas because obviously what you do in this situation is you stop for gas. (laughs) He was out of gas. Okay. (laughs) he was so then the rule is that in case you ever get (laughs) killed by someone who's abducting someone just always drive on e so they have to go get gas (laughs) um so then casey is like hey i think we stopped we're at a gas station all i can hear is music i can't see anything and then she's like wait i have an idea and she, you know, that little like square into the trunk of like some cars where they can get into the back seat. She like climbs her way through the little square. Like I could never, obviously, <laughs> but she like climbs her way out and she's like, you know, waving and waving and the gas station attendant's not paying attention. So then she starts screaming and she's like, help, help, I've been kidnapped. And then the gas station attendant, oh, bless his heart, pulls out his little box knife and he goes, hey. <laughs> You get away from her because he wouldn't. He locked the door really fast. And then he's like, get away from her. He like comes around with his box knife and he's like staring him down. And the guy rips the gas nozzle out of the car and blasts him with gasoline and sets him on fire. That was the craziest kill of the whole day. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. So, um, and so I felt really bad for the gas station attendant. Because he really needs to help. Like, I, the guy who told him about the paint, like, I thought should have called the cops. So I didn't feel as bad about the guy with the paint. Because he, he should have done it differently. If should you see smarter, something, buddy. 
yeah if you if you see something coming out of someone's tail like call the police <laughs> it's probably not supposed to be there you could save someone's life too and your own turns out mm-hmm. um <laughs> okay so then he like rips her back into the trunk and knocks her out and like closes it and drives off, right? So then the police find a an undisturbed fingerprint that matches the, the guy who uh who who abducted um Casey. And so they go to his house and he's not there, but his wife is there with her kids and he tell they tell him her everything and they find out that Michael is renovating a cottage up in like the mountains and they believe that's where she- he took her. So they go all up there and they're like, the house is empty. Like it's not, no one's here. Okay. So then she, her phone got disconnected and her boss is like, go home. You're done. Like you can't do anymore. This is all you've done there's no going back the phone got disconnected you can't get back in touch with her so they're trying to send jordan home but jordan doesn't go home (laughs) of course not because jordan is like hellbent on this case so then we're back with michael and casey and he like why though why are we back with michael and casey no no no. why is she hellbent on Oh, yeah. So the reason she's hellbent on the case is that we find out that this guy is the same guy who did the um, did the abduction six months ago to Leah and killed her. And uh, we find that out because she like he picks up the phone and he's like, it's already done, just like he did six months ago and like hangs up on her. Mm-hmm. Then we find out it's the same person. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> we're with Michael and Casey. We know it's Michael now. We know that he's with Casey. He, like, drugs her with, like, this gas and, like, washes her hair and, like, straps her down. He, like, trims her hair and uh, she, like, grabs this bottle of hairspray and, like, sprays it at him. And she starts running through the, like, place where they are. We don't really know where they are yet. Um, And so, because they're obviously not at that little cottage. So then she starts running and she goes in this room and he goes, you don't want to see what's in there. And then I wrote, I just wrote, the woman was too stunned to speak. (laughs) (laughs) Because we didn't see what was in there at that point. So then Jordan, um, we're back with Jordan. She doesn't go home. She's sitting there re-listening to the call that she just took. So she's re-listening to it and she hears this like weird sound, but she can't figure out what it is. So she's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it myself. It's my turn, bitch. (laughs) So she tries out to yeah, she drives out to that property and starts a snooping. She like finds pictures of this like kid with cancer and like this little boy kissing that person with cancer and like a whole bunch of stuff he she finds in this little cottage and because she's snooping. And she goes out here side and hears that little clank 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 sound and she follows the clank 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 sound because that's where Michael and Casey must be cuz that's the last thing she heard. Anyway, so some by some miraculousness, she finds this bunker on the ground and she like opens the door and then she's like, oh, I should call 911. She pulls out her phone and drops the phone straight into the bunker and that down there, there's no service. And so she's like, okay, I'm going to climb in. So she climbs down into the bunker and she like, see, she like hears some things and she kind of see, and then Michael comes out the door and she like runs into this room and then she, you know, turns off all, she's like hiding and then she turns on her phone light and she like sees the horrors of the room. It's like this room that's like all bloody and stuff with like um, a little, what looks to be like a wig (laughs) on a mannequin head and it's like blonde hair, long blonde hair. And uh, it's basically not a wig though. It's it's real hair. It's real hair. Scalped off of scalped. someone else. <laughs> so it was Leo. Yeah. So um he like goes into the room and she like hides in the closet and he's like hugging the hair and like sniffing it. Sniffing it. And then he it like I don't know. What is that blue thing that he pulled off of it? It was uh like a hair um clip. 
Oh, uh, anyway, so that makes him furious. He pulls off this like blue hair clip, and it makes him furious. He throws the wig, wig, the scalp into the refrigerator, and then runs off. So then, uh, you know, Jordan's piecing together the pieces of this disgusting little puzzle, and then he goes over to Casey and starts trying to scalp her Mm -hmm. and and we're like this is it for casey like she's gonna get her hair cut off like it's out of here and then bang and jordan like hits him over the head and like unstraps casey and you know all this stuff but then the bang over the head didn't get him that hard so he pulls jordan off and shoves her down into the water and tries to drown her and then casey takes a knife and like slashes his face (laughs) And then they, it chase ensues for reals. <laughs> so then they're outside of the bunker and they're all like, you know, he, he's trying to chase both of them, but they're kind of outsmarting him. So Casey stabs him in the back with a piece of sciz- with a pair of scissors. And then, uh, what's her name? Jordan like kicks him into the hole and then he like falls down. And so then they're like, let's call 911. And then they're like, wait a second. No he doesn't deserve jail time so then they go and take him into the bunker tie him up and just leave him (laughs) ties him up and leaves him for dead and they're like deuces and he's like you can't do that and she goes what jordan found me in the woods running away from you like we didn't find you (laughs) they're not gonna let the police like (laughs) have any resolution to any of the other abductions i feel like they should have let like everyone know <laughs> that this is the guy and now he's no longer going to be out in the streets but they didn't want him to live anymore obviously right so then they just left him and then yep. roll credits <laughs> the literally end. literally they were like bye let's close the bunker roll credits <laughs> i don't know how they really did that with all the cops looking for him like <laughs> i truly don't know how they pulled that off like afterwards <laughs> but I don't know, I was thinking that, I was like, hmm. <laughs> that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but, you know, it's a movie. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Uh, so, Haley, did you ruin how much it costs to make this movie? No, I did not see that. Do you want to guess? Five million. No. Would you like a second guess? Yeah, higher or lower? Higher. Eight million. Um, no. <laughs> Damn it. It was thirteen million to produce. Uh... and do you want to guess how much it made in the box office? Did it make us money back? <laughs> yeah. One hundred and twenty million dollars. <laughs> no. Less. Way less. <laughs> Uh, thirteen million and one. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. So in the first three days, it made seventeen million. Woo! And the box office overall was over sixty-eight million dollars after the release. Damn it! Sixty-eight million dollars. So that's half. A, that's a little over half of what I said. But it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I had higher expectations, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that was the price, the pricing, the box office and like the budget and stuff. Uh, do you want some fun facts? <laughs> I, oh my God. <clears throat> I've been waiting for this moment. Okay. Fun facts with Catherine. <laughs> Great, perfect. You got your um, own little jingle. <laughs> um, okay. So starting out small, this movie was shot over 25 days. That's it. Oh. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Halle yeah, Berry it was in a car. <laughs> yeah. Halle Berry visited a call center and shadowed 911 operators to prepare for her role. Good. That's the good. longest time that Abigail Breslin was close into a, into a trunk was 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any given time. <laughs> man, she made it look so much worse. Yeah, right? Um, and the scene with the gas station attendant being set on fire was done in a single take. 
So like there was no cuts, no nothing. Damn. One take. So during the fight scene with Michael, Halle Berry suffered a head injury and had to be rushed to a hospital, but she was declared fine and well, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and the first girl who played Leah, she actually broke a tooth while um, being chased by the, the killer or abductor or whatever. How the hell do you do that? I don't know. Bruh. And um, the guy who plays Michael Foster, his name's Michael Euclid, I, Euclid or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he sent in an audition tape to the producers that helped him land his role, um, which probably was pretty creepy, I bet. Because, like, I mean, I didn't see it, but... Oh, yeah. But I'm, I'm betting you- it was, like, real creepy. <laughs> Ooh, he's He's a creepy-looking dude. Yeah, he's pretty creepy. Especially um, that like picture that they have of him when they find like when his fingerprints come back and yeah. it's just like him smiling, but it's like a weird smile. And like his eyes are gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has dead eyes for sure. At least in the movie. I don't know about him in real life. Um <laughs> and then my last one that I think was really super interesting is that during the beginning there's like a bunch of nine one one calls that people are that you're hearing people take. And you hear this one guy say, I think I'm having an overdose and so is my wife. And that line is a famous line by um, a policeman named Edward Sanchez. And he had taken marijuana that was um, on a suspect and made brownies with it and called 911 because he thought he had taken too much marijuana. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember but, hearing that line, too. I was like, yeah. that looks so clear. <laughs> yeah. And so that one was like a real 911 call. Um, and I think those are all my fun facts, but let's do ratings of what people thought of it, right? So it was on, it got a 6.7 out of 10 on IMDb, a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 87% like this movie of Google users. Mm, still was, not our worst one. It's still not the worst run. It, I mean, this is very mediocre. And honestly, the film is relatively mediocre. Except for there are some kick-ass, like, lines or, like, you know, <laughs> you know, like, badass lines. But anyway, mm-hmm. it's pretty mediocre as a movie as is. But it made a lot of money. <laughs> it did make a lot of money. It was directed by Brad Anderson. Brad Anderson. Brad Anderson. Haley, what do you rate this movie? I would say I would probably give it like a maybe a six. It's not the best movie. It's good. It's still good after watching it after ten years, but I don't know. I I want more. Yeah. I wanted more of the killer. I would have liked it. I would have liked an epilogue of some sort, you know, an end credit, (laughs) um, an end credit scene or, you know, the, the killer and, or the killer's victims getting just desserts by having him go away. But I'd rate it as well. I'd probably rate it a six, a six or a 6.5, I guess. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't write home to anyone about it. I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, go watch this 10 year old movie. <laughs> <laughs> like there are so right. many other movies that I'd probably watch before. That. <laughs> exactly. But on the other hand, here's the other thing. I've probably seen this at least three times now. <laughs> so it can't be too bad. And it holds up, I think, especially if you have a goldfish brain. <laughs> And the tagline for this movie, I just read this. It says, there are 188 million 911 calls a year. This one made it personal. I love taglines of movies. Oh, yeah. It's great. Well, I guess that's it. Wow. Thank you, Catherine, for bringing us a movie. You're welcome. I didn't have to do anything. Is this what Uh, you feel like every horror week? Yes. (laughs) 
I'm I'm like, dang. I just had to watch a movie and enjoy myself and I love horror movie week because I don't gotta do shit. Anyways, go ahead and go watch the movie if you want to. Don't get kidnapped. I know we're not I know we're not giving it a very good like <laughs> go watch it, I guess. Enjoy the movie. Uh don't get kidnapped. Yeah. Um, don't get kidnapped. Be in pairs. Buddy up. Yeah. Don't be like the bitch of a friend that left her friend at a mall. Yeah, that was fucking rude. And don't date a guy named Raul that buys you a track phone that is untraceable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spooky babes, we are happy that you joined us today. Yes. And uh, we want to make sure that you drink your water and eat a vegetable this week. At least once. <laughs> Squeeze the day. Squeeze the day. What does my shirt say today? Oh, it says Lisa Frank. Um, <laughs> Ooh, Lisa Frank the day. Lisa Frank the day. I got Haley for her birthday a little sign that says squeeze the day. So now she has something ah. squeeze the day-esque. <laughs> my mouth literally hit the floor. I was like, oh my God, it's perfect. <laughs> I She's put a little beautiful. post-it on it that said to my favorite spooky babe. But we care about you and the world's a better place with you in it. So please stick around if you're thinking of leaving. Okay. On that note, we will see you in your trunks. No. In in your nightmares. In your bunkers. In your bunkers. (laughs) Don't trust anyone with a bunker. (laughs) No. It's just bad news. Bad news bears. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.